if you want to know how I got from this to this, then stay tuned. Yeah, I, I can explain this. Hello there sewing pals and gals. My name is Jacqueline and this is the Sewing Parlor. This is where I stitch, create, and share my sewing makes. Today I'm going to go over a simplicity pattern that I use to make a diaper bag as well as a PDF download that I use to make a stroller cover. If that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and stay tuned. Get yourself something to sip on, something to munch on, and let's get started. All right, so to begin with, I wanted to make my own diaper bag. I had received my first diaper bag with my first pregnancy uh, five years ago, and what I liked about it was the style, although to me it was too big and bulky. It was something I got off um, a baby registry, and so I never actually saw it in person until I received it as the gift. And using that, it was heavy. It had a chain on it. Um, it was just really wide and I ended up not really using it that much, unfortunately. So for my third pregnancy, I wanted to make my own diaper bag. And uh, Simplicity had just come out with a pattern that featured one. And this is Simplicity 92, I'm sorry, 92, hello, 9299. And here's the diaper bag here. So looking at it, um, it was exactly what I needed. Just two po bottle pockets on the side, a front pocket, um, and the size of it just by this picture looked about the size that I wanted. Um, so unfortunately, when I was cutting out the pattern, I cut out all the pieces, and then as I was um, starting to put things together, I realized this pattern piece is the front and back. It was just going to be a little bit too big for, see, I can't even get it in frame. It's so big. It was going to be too big for a diaper bag. I mean, this is about the size of a tote bag to me. So after cutting out all the pieces, I had to basically finagle and realize I needed to cut out maybe two and a half inches from each side and then five inches down. So I reduced quite a bit to get the end result, the size that I was going for. And I think the size that I ended up with is just perfect. Um, so Another thing that I had to go through to get the end result that I needed, I had this vision in mind for how I wanted the bag to feel. I wanted kind of like a gel coating. Um, and I had done, I had bought a vinyl. That didn't work. It was way too plasticky. Um, so I came across a... Uh, so during my research, I came across the product Odie Coat, and I watched a tutorial on it, and I thought, well, this is perfect because it has the protectant coating um, that I would need in case anything spilled on the bag. I could just wipe it away, and um, it's a waterproof, stain-resistant gel coating. And the tutorials I watched, they did about uh, two coats of the product. You just kind of dab it on and then you scrape it away just to get kind of get it in between the fibers and get a, a flat surface. So what I had done because I wanted to that I was going for a certain feel. So I did actually about three to four coats on each pattern piece and with the pattern pieces of both the facing and the lining I did about double the amount of pattern pieces when you apply it you have to let it set for 24 hours before applying another coat so I was doing this for over a couple weeks time um, just when I can you know pay some attention to it anyways so the end result was good It had that kind of gel feeling that I was going for, but as they all dried out, um, 
and I laid them on top of each other, I realized that, here, I realized that if it gets stuck to itself, I mean, it's sticky. It's really sticky. So, unfortunately, I decided that wasn't going to work. So, I ended up deciding on <laughs> what the tutorial suggested, which was two coats. So, I ended up having to cut out all the pattern pieces again, which was fine because I had plenty of fabric that I had purchased. Um, this is the Groku Baby Yoda um, fabric. Uh, it's just the cotton that I got from Joann's. So I'll link it down below. Um, I purchased five yards, and this doesn't take too many yards. In fact, um, let's see, for the diaper bag, if you're using 60 inches, it's a, a yard and an eighth. So I have plenty of fabric to fall back on. And I had redone all those pattern pieces, giving each one two coats, and it was enough to protect the fabric. And even though it's not the feeling I was going for, it's not an issue. So I am happy with the end result of both the application of the Otico and um, having to reduce the amount of the pattern um, to be the size, the dimensions that I thought would be uh, more fitting for myself. I am happy with the end result. So as you can see, I did a faux leather for the straps and the base. It does call for a cardboard piece or a stabilizer to insert at the bottom, but I thought with the um, faux leather that I used, it was stable enough. I So I opted out for the cardboard insert. Um, Unfortunately, the fabric or the faux leather that I use for the straps, they do stretch, so I don't recommend using this for um, bag making. I wouldn't use this again for bag making in the future, um, but I'll also link what I use down below because I do think it's great for um, kind of like a pocket or another feature, just something that doesn't is, isn't going to take much of a beating, much resistance. Um, I am surprised, but it all the stitchings are still in place. They haven't snapped, but it does have a good amount of little bit of stretch to it. So I just need to watch out for that. Um, so I did use a matte faux leather for the binding, and that one I got at Hobby Lobby. So it does call for a so it does call for Velcro for the closure, but I just sewed on a metal snap. And that seems to work perfectly fine. Um, because I used the binding on the top, I had to I had to figure out a different way to sew on the closure, but um, it still works out. It does have a pocket on the inside that is the length that sorry baby wipes. It does have a full length pocket on the inside. Excuse my contents. As you can see, I do use this. <laughs> um, but it has a full length pocket on the inside. Um, it does have another one. It does have an elasticated pocket on the inside. And what I decided to do is just do a stitching down kind of the center so that I have a little bit of a divider. Just more options to keep things separated on the inside. And it does feature a bottle pocket on each side. Um, I will say that stitching the side panels with the elasticated pocket was a bit of a challenge. Um, this is, I, I have made tote bags in the past, but nothing um, with quite amount of attention to detail as this has. So as it did take me a long time to stitch up just with having, you know, a brand new baby and two other children to look after. I didn't have too much time for sewing and I, with the amount of trials and errors that I did go through with this, it just took me a little bit longer than I had, would have liked. But I am happy with the end result. I mean, I think it's the perfect size after cutting down the dimensions of each panel piece. So I did use a contrasting thread um, to stitch it up, and that just meant that I had to 
I had to pay attention to the precision of the stitches um, a little bit more than if I had used maybe a black thread. Um, so I did have to go over some areas quite a few times, but that's okay. I did have the idea to maybe add a crossbody strap, um, and I did make that. Let me see, where did I put it? So I did end up making a strap to use for, um, to make it into a crossbody, but by the time I was finally done with this, I decided it didn't really need one. To be honest, I was kind of done <laughs> with this bag with the amount of time that it did take to make it. So the next baby related product that I sewed up was a stroller cover and I uh, watched Simply Delilah both on YouTube and Instagram as well as Etsy. Her, she has a shop on Etsy and that's where I got the PDF download to make the stroller cover. So she had featured the stroller cover on her channel and she used a baby Groku or baby Yoda um, fabric that she got. So she got this fabric from Joann's. So my husband and I are big Star Wars fans. So I went to Hobby Lobby and I saw the fabric that I chose for the diaper bag and I wanted to make a the matching stroller cover. And I had seen the fabric um, that had the pink on it and of course I had to get it because I have a baby girl and I thought that would just be so cute. She does sell the stroller covers on her Etsy shop i'll link that down below as well um but she also offers a pdf download and because i wanted to use a, a different fabric for it um i decided to purchase that and i will say it was a very um easy to follow instructions she gives you the dimensions um and the instructions and it was a pretty easy sew up um so I'll feature photos of it in use. I took my daughters to an apple orchard and it was perfect for that. Um, I pretty much use it every time we go out um, just to keep the sun out of her eyes and just to kind of protect her um, in case she's sleeping. It helps her, you know, stay asleep. But it does have two straps to, uh, two Velcro straps to hook onto the top of your handle of the stroller and then it calls for a mesh um i just got this mesh from hobby lobby and i just doubled it up i thought one layer was wouldn't be enough to kind of shade her from the sun um so i just doubled it up and you could it's still plenty of room for breathing and shade i did purchase um specialized labels from intensely distracted she does a couple of star wars labels and that you can see is a lightsaber and on the back this one says may the force be with you so I thought that was super cute there's a couple other different sayings for the labels she offered and that I had purchased so yeah it's really simple and easy um, and of course I love that it matches with the diaper bag so those are the baby related products that I sewed up for my daughter or to use with my daughter um, she is now 11 months old this month, so time is moving by fast. But I did want to go over some of the other last few items that I did sew up, um, kind of on my leave of absence from YouTube last year after, after having my baby. So I did sew up Halloween costumes for my five-year-old and as well as my baby, and, um, she, my oldest daughter wanted to be Alice from Alice in Wonderland. So I used the McCall's pattern of M49, well, M4948. And I used the Alice pattern there. Um, I didn't really have any issues with the pattern. It was a pretty, it was a pretty simple sew up. Uh, it, I mean, let's see. Do the costume patterns even give you like what rating it is? I'm not seeing it, <laughs> but I would say it's average because you do have to um, insert a zipper. Um, but other than this zipper and the hook and eye at the top back closure, um, I would say the rest is a pretty easy sew up. The only issue that I would have, if I had to redo this costume, the only issue um, that I would resolve is the apron portion is not sewed onto the dress and the bottom part of the skirt kind of 
um, raises up. So if I were to redo it, I would just sew the front part of the apron to the front part of the bodice uh, where the white where the white meets. So between there and there is I would just sew that directly onto the dress. Um, that way there's no separation and um, the kid can play. I mean, I did I did tie it pretty good and it, the bottom of the skirt just kind of kept riding up. So I would definitely give caution to that. And it's kind of funny because while we were out um, trick-or-treating, some, uh, someone thought she was Dorothy, <laughs> which is another, um, all you have to do is change the fabric but it's pretty much the same costume without the apron. So it's pretty much the same costume, just using a gingham fabric, and it was kind of funny that they thought that she was Dorothy, um, but I had to correct them, so. <laughs> um, I guess the guy just doesn't know his fabrics. <laughs> so, and for my baby, for my baby, I we decided that she was going to be the caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland, and so I kind of mishmashed, mishmashed. Um, I mixed two pattern pieces together. I used the body portion of this pattern. It's Butterick five five eight three, um, and then I added the hood from Simplicity's eight one eight one. I added the hood. I didn't. Um, obviously adding extra bear or <laughs> dragon details um, but I'll show you a picture of what I came up with for her costume um, I did have to uh, draw out pattern pieces for the little caterpillar feet or booties and um, I just stuffed those with a little bit of cotton and sewed them along the the belly portion by the zipper um so i did use the top of this pattern to go with the body of this um pattern and then just the hood part and i thought it turned out pretty well i mean she was just in a stroller the whole time so while we were trick-or-treating so um it wasn't really featured that much and it got dark you know quickly after we went out so I will say the amount of time that it took to sew up the costume versus how long she actually wore it um, probably wasn't worth it. But I mean, it definitely was worth it for the photos and just to have her match her older sister um, as part of the, you know, Alice in Wonderland theme. It was pretty great. Um, my middle daughter didn't want to be anything from Alice in Wonderland. So she, she just did a store-bought costume of a little witch. Which was still really cute. I'm glad that she chose that because I did, um, I was going to sew her up a witch's costume basically using the same uh, patterns as you can see. There's a witch featured on here and this does um, come in two different sizes. This is the kids and goes three to eight and then there's the same pattern for adult sizes in um, another size section. But I'm glad when we were out looking at Halloween stuff, she decided she wanted a certain witch costume, and so we just did it store-bought. And I'm perfectly fine with that because she was still way super cute. Okay, so those are all of the makes that I have done um, during my time off from YouTube. So you're all caught up with everything that I made. If you want to see more from me, please hit like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know when I upload next. So until I sew again, I hope you sew something beautiful for yourself.